Okay, Spaceman one three one three two six uh, says, besides one rare GI Joe worth twenty thousand dollars, can you do a top ten video of three and three quarter that are rare and worth the most money? Uh, I would like to know the value of the top ten or top twenty GI Joe slash Cobra figures and vehicles, as well as uh, if you can find out how many were made of that figure line because they do list it some uh, sometimes. Uh, and there's a link here. Now this is a cool idea and if I made a video like that a lot of people would probably watch it because people like those top 10 type videos. Um, I don't think I will do it mainly because um, I, I try not to go too much into pricing on this channel in my videos. Uh, I don't want people to use my videos as a price guide uh, mainly because uh, it's prices change so fast if I were to put up a video and tell even if I could determine like the average or the mean value of an item you know by the time you watch it almost it would be outdated so I try to stay with that I will talk about price in relative terms or in general terms but I try not to talk about price or value of items in specific terms so I probably won't do that but if anybody were interested in doing that um, and wanted to take the time to do the research, that'd be a very interesting video. It's not a bad idea. Okay, Brian Reese uh, says, uh, do you collect any modern era shows? Not really. Uh, like I said, I do have a few, but I don't consider myself to be a modern era collector. Um, I had had the thought that maybe after I got everything from the vintage line, like everything, everything, I would go on to collect modern figures and vehicles, but I don't. I don't think I'm going to do that. I just I've, I have some, so I know what they're like, uh, and I've seen a lot of them. But I just I'm not making the connection to the modern shows that I have with the vintage shows. So I just don't think I'm going to go there. Uh, let's see, Tim Roper says uh, my question is uh, which non-army builder figure makes a good army builder. Uh, so typically a named character isn't usually one you would buy multiples of, uh, other versions notwithstanding, right? Uh, but uh, you might get away with having a few wetsuits or char rolls in your rings. Okay, good point. Um, I think though, I'm going to go with Cobra though, because when I think of army building, I really think, I, I think of Cobra. So Cobra is a great army building uh, uh, enemy, lots of great army building figures. But uh, a figure that is not an army builder that might make a great one, I think maybe Firefly. You know, Firefly is not an army builder figure, but but he just looks really cool. And you could, I mean, his face is, is masked, so he doesn't look like an individual. So you could have a little squad of Fireflies, and that would be pretty awesome. Like some kind of a SWAT team or something, or like some, I don't know, some kind of special forces infiltration team of Fireflies. I think that would be pretty cool. Okay, uh, RF5, uh, I'm sorry, RF, sorry, five days ago, RF said, um, see, one, what percentage of your collection is from your childhood? Zero uh, percent. I don't have anything left from my childhood. However, um, there is a rumor that somewhere in my brother's storage unit, there is a toolbox that has some of our childhood G.I. Joes in it. That's the rumor anyway. I have asked my brother to dig it out. He hasn't done that yet. But if I ever get my hands on that, then I will open it for you. You can see whatever is left of my childhood collection. I don't think it's very much, but it's whatever fit in that little toolbox. Uh, next question, is, what made you decide to start collecting as an adult? Well, I tell you, I was actually going through some rough times. I, had, I was having a really hard time, uh, uh, I don't know, two, three years ago. And I was looking for something that uh, was just fun and distracting and uh, just something, I, I thought maybe I'd find something from my childhood that just remembers, reminds me of good things, good times, fun times. Um, and so I just started looking, well see, I, I thought Transformers or Star Wars, those didn't quite cut it. Um, I didn't have enough, you know, really great memories of those. But G.I. Joe, I still had a lot of fun memories uh, about. And so I just started looking at like Yojo.com. I just started looking at the different figures uh, on Yojo.com and just kind of remembering, you know, which ones I had, which ones I didn't have. 
Um, and, you know, looking at some of the stuff that came later after I stopped collecting and see what happened to G.I. Joe after I left it. Um, and that was a lot of fun, and that sort of started the ball rolling. Then I started looking at eBay and seeing how much they cost to get, you know, get, com get them complete and get them again. And then I started, I got Breaker. Breaker was the first one that I got as uh, an adult collector because he was, it was the first figure that I got as a kid. Straight on Breaker from 1982. So that's kind of what got me started. Um, and my life did get better. I, I was had a rough patch there. Um, but um, G.I. Joe sort of helped me through that and I enjoyed it and I still do. Okay. Um, what okay? Uh, what compelled you to start a YouTube channel dedicated to GI Joe's toys slash reviews? I sort of answered this earlier. I did have an older YouTube channel that was more about uh, politics and political science and uh, philosophy and law and economics and stuff like that. But I didn't want to do that anymore. But I wanted to do something on YouTube. I, I had some experience in producing content for YouTube, and I just really wanted to get back to YouTube. So, you know, it, it seemed like a good idea, and so I gave it a try. Uh, and again, I didn't intend to do uh, toy reviews at first, but that's kind of what I ended up doing. And let's see, for what other items, if any, do you collect? I don't really collect anything right now. I, I, there are some things that I kind of like to get into, but, you know, I'm refraining because I don't want the collecting to get out of hand. You know, got got to, you know, keep it within reason. But someday... Someday there might be a few other things that I get. Okay. Itam Irut says, which are your top three favorite 90s G.I. Joes and why? Uh, I know you're more into 80s ones, but I'm curious if you can name three uh, that you really like from the next de decade. Okay. Well, I can only really comment on the 90s jo Joes that I have. I can't really comment on any 90s Joes that I don't have. So uh, that would make my top three then. Um, Ambush, because I think he comes with great accessories, really cool figure. Um, Recoil, great figure, great sculpt. I like the digital camouflage, really cool. Uh, and then Chabang, because those are the only three 90s Joes that I have right now. So Chabang makes the list by default. Um, that list will grow. I know that there are some other 90s figures that I will probably really like, uh, but I don't have them yet. So, there are things to look forward to in the future. We'll see where that goes. Uh, okay, Magic Rooster Blues says, uh, What was your original inspiration for starting the channel? Uh, passion for the greatest action figure line ever conceived. Uh, yeah, I talked about a little, this a little bit. Um, wanted to do something on YouTube. Wanted to do little, little G.I. Joe movies. You know, I had this whole G.I. Joe sort of movies uh, uh, plan script planned out, but it just got to be too much. I, it was um, more than I could reasonably do, and so I ended up doing toy reviews, and every once in a while I'll do a little action scene for a minute, minute and a half, something like that, and I'm having fun with that. But I do have some other ideas, uh, some other things that I like to do, um, you know, some things that will maybe make the channel a little bit more fun, uh, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of how I ended up doing this. Okay, Rick Ice says, uh, I have a few questions for you. Uh, have you got any uh, collecting strategies? No, I don't. I tried. I tried. Uh, I tried to, like, do a year at a time, but I completely failed because there other things come up, and I want them. And so other things and things that I was going to get, they have to, you know, uh, go lower on the priority list because other things come to my attention and, and I have to get them. So now collecting strategy, now that's straight out the window. Uh, I have no collecting strategy. It's whatever I can come across, you know, and whatever um, I think I can get at the time. Uh, and this, this has created some problems because people request reviews of me. They have things they want me to review. I don't have the item yet, so I want to get the item so I can do the request to review. So I, I look for it and I think, okay, well, the prices on this, they're not too good. I think I can get a better price if I'm a little bit more patient. And then something else will come along and then I, I, it just it's completely messed up. I, no strategy, any attempts at, at a collecting strategy have totally failed. If you're going to start a collection, try to have a strategy and stick with it. This is what happens if you don't. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, 
Well, what do you think of the figure series after 1994? I don't really consider them vintage after 94, and so I don't really know what I think of them. Um, I don't really know much about them, so, you know, I, I can't really say. Uh, it's something that I may look into in the future, but I, I can't really answer that right now. Uh, how do you organize spaces for your collection? Uh, uh, have you set a goal for your collection? Will you review other comics other than the, for your first year's issues? Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Uh, okay, organizing space for my collection. Again, like my collecting strategy, totally out the window. Now I'm just trying to find any space that I can fit new stuff because I'm about out of room and I don't. I got more stuff coming in and I don't know where I'm going to put it. Um, so I don't have any good way to plan out my space. I don't really have a lot of space uh, of my own where I can set up my own stuff. So uh, something's going to have to radically change. I'm going to have to work on that. But because it's reaching like a critical level now. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding any space for anything new. Uh, and then let's see, um, review uh, comics. Okay, a, a goal for your collection. I want to have everything from the vintage line. Uh, however long that takes. may take forever. Maybe I'll never attain that goal, but that's the goal. Uh, I'm, I've decided that I, I need to be a completist. That's just how my personality works. Uh, and uh, other comics other than the first year's issue, yes, eventually I'd like to uh, review the entire Marvel run. It's just going to take a long time and I've kind of stalled on that right now. I hope in the near future I can get that kick started again. Alright, uh, Blake uh, Cabrera says, uh, if you found a complete Create a Cobra action figure at a flea market, garage sale or eBay, would you pay $50 for it? Yes, because that would be a bargain for a complete create a cobra figure you know vintage you know actual real not a, a repro or anything like that yeah i take that deal uh, the create a cobra figure is another one that i don't really like the action figure and they're really freaking expensive and it's another one i'm really not looking forward to spending a lot of money on a figure that i don't like so if there if i ran across one for 50 bucks yeah, you could not get the money out of my wallet fast enough. Yes, I would take that deal. Uh, Tony Jackson, uh, favorite Cobra Commander, hooded battle or battle armored? Um, I'm going to go with the battle Cobra Commander, the one with the silver face mask. Now, I, I really like hooded Cobra Commander. It's the name of this channel. Um, and it, the Hooded Cobra Commander has a special mystique for me because I didn't have one as a kid. I didn't get the mail away. Uh, but that that classic silver mask, um, there's just something so sinister about it that I, I think that's my favorite. Um, and let's see, let's see, and then Chrome Dome Destro or Iron Grenadier Goldhead Destro. Another good question. Um, I like the uniform for the Iron Grenadier Destro. I think it looks a lot more military. It doesn't have the open disco collar with the medallion on it. So I like the uniform, but I like the classic silver head. So if I could, if I could have the, the Iron Grenadier uniform with the silver head, I think that would be perfect. Okay, uh, Troy Smith, uh, do you plan to do more action films? Yes. Uh, and can you talk about your camera and editing equipment? I talked about that a little bit earlier. I have an HD Samsung camera, a really inexpensive camera, uh, and um, you know uh, Sony editing software. Uh, that, uh, you know, it's the stuff that you pay for. It's not the free stuff. Um, and you know, it works well enough. Uh, and I've got enough experience using it that I can do a few tricks with it. So um, uh, yeah, that's my stuff. Uh, okay, Bjorn Jacob. Benonison, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing names. This is the best I can do. I'm from Oklahoma. Give me a break. Uh, when you and your friends played with uh, Joes as kids, uh, did you always play as Joes, or did you play as Cobra sometimes? Uh, did you make a scenario before you started playing, or did you just jump into battle? Uh, Happy New Year from Norway. Happy New Year, Norway, from the United States. Um, the answer is uh, I, both. We play both G.I. Joe and Cobra. When my... Uh, friends and I played, we would often 
uh, just to sort of start out with an idea, like this is what they're going to be after. They're going to be trying to get this secret plan or something. Uh, and we create a little scenario. It wouldn't be all planned out, but we'd have a starting point. And it would just go in all different directions. And so everybody would be some Joe and some Cobra. And, you know, you'd have the interactions. And sometimes, though, we would just want to have a big battle. And we in somebody's backyard, either ours or a friend's, you like set up G.I. Joe on one side and set up Cobra on the other side. And we spent a lot of time running between them because we would want our Joes to attack specific Cobra guys. And so we would kind of play both sides of that and create a whole scenario. Sometimes we'd have like subplots of our, of our main story. We got pretty elaborate. From Twitter, Eric Diorio asks, uh, when do you think G.I. Joe jumped the shark? Uh, Cobra Law, man. Cobra Law. And that's not to say that there was nothing good that came after the 1987 G.I. Joe animated movie. Sure, good stuff from G.I. Joe came out after that. That's not what I'm saying. But, I mean, this whole idea of Jump the Shark comes from uh, a Happy Days episode when the Fonz jumped a shark. And it was just ridiculous. Uh, and it's that point where you realize they're, they're pretty much out of ideas. Oh, there may have been some good Happy Days episodes after the Jump the Shark episode, I don't know. But the point is, after they jump the shark, they can't really go back. And to me, that's what Cobra Law is to me. It's, it was just about a hundred steps too far. Um, and that just really broke it for me. So yeah, that's what I would say. Is, that's when I'd say they jumped the shark. Okay, um, next question is from MTN Nut. Uh, says, how about a video tour of your Joe Space, <coughs> excuse me, as part of your year-end special? Well, um, I'm not going to do it as part of the year-end special, but I do have a plan for to do something like that. I have a specific plan, not ready to do it yet, but it's coming. It's, it's, it's in the works. It's in the works, but I'm, I don't have it ready for the end of the year. Uh, CM Brewer asks, um, have you reviewed the Sears Cobra Command Center? No, not yet. I don't have it yet. I want it. That is one of my holy grails. Someday it will be mine. Uh, there have been occasions when I've run across one and I, I mean it was a reasonable price but I didn't have the money at the time to get it. And then there are other times when I have the money but I can't find one sometimes can't find one at all uh, and, and, and sometimes you can find one but it's not a reasonable price uh, and so I just haven't been able someday those two things the money and the price will come together and I'll get one but it hasn't happened yet but believe me I've got my eyes open that that's what I need to complete 1982 that's what I need get that 1982 done so someday someday probably not soon but someday all right, on Facebook, uh, Jeff Adams asks, um, what would you consider to be the most underrated vehicle from G.I. Joe and Cobra? Uh, the most underrated vehicle, I think the old 1982 Mobat is a little bit underrated, and I can understand why. It doesn't actually you know, roll over objects very well. It's battery powered, so if you don't have batteries in it, it doesn't move, it's like a big paperweight. Um, it has the driver sticking up you know, halfway out of the top of the tank, and that looks a little silly. So I can see why it would be not rated very high, but I really like the look of the tank. Um, not so much necessarily as a toy, it doesn't play very well, but it looks really cool uh, as a display, and I love all the detail in that. All that detail, you know, in 1982, the first wave of the line, it just shows a lot of effort went into the design. So I think it's a little bit underrated. Uh, and for the Cobra, um, I, I had a harder time with this one. Um, maybe the Fang helicopter, because it's a small vehicle, maybe it doesn't get quite as much respect. But I really liked the Fang. The, the Fang, that was my Cobra Air Force for a long time. Uh, maybe the Cobra Stun, because it's weird. I admit, it's a weird vehicle. But now that I have one, I, I kind of like it, even though it's weird. I'm not saying it's not weird. It's a strange vehicle. But in its own way, it's kind of cool. So maybe that one, I'm not sure about that answer. It's harder to pick for Cobra. There are so many vehicles that maybe aren't rated so high and so picking one that's underrated that's that's tough 
But those are the two that come to mind. Maybe the Fang, maybe the Stun. Uh, Terrell White says, uh, what would you consider your rarest G.I. Joe figure or vehicle? Well, probably uh, version 1A of Steel Brigade, uh, maybe the Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, uh, although this Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander is not in perfect condition. I actually had one that was in slightly better shape, but I sold it because I needed the money to buy more stuff. Um, so well, maybe those two, probably the rarest ones that I have. Uh, um, Hezekiah St. Raven. Uh, this is a long one. Uh, I noticed you in several of your earlier videos, you were wearing alternative and more specifically industrial band t-shirts. Uh, are you mostly a fan of that genre? And if so, what are your favorite bands? Uh, I used to be. In fact, I'm wearing Kraftwerk. Um, uh, I used to be uh, in my younger days, not so much uh, today. I don't really listen to a lot of music now. Um, but in the old days, you know, I used to go to a lot of shows. Um, I really liked uh, KMFDM and Thrill Kill Cult. Um, a skinny puppy that was a favorite of mine. Uh, I mean, we, and we've seen so many. Some of them are, are kind of uh, obscure. Uh, there was this German band uh, called Einsterzinde Neubauten, uh, which uh, I, I saw them in concert once, and they were pretty cool. Um, uh, so many, so many. Uh, it's hard to say which one was my favorite. But I've kind of been out of that scene for a while. But hey, still have the T-shirts. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, and uh, to tie this in with G.I. Joe, do you have any particular opinions on the way music from a cultural standpoint was used in G.I. Joe, i.e. the Dreadnoughts being punk, uh, characters that were noted as being fans of certain types of music, Zartan having face paint in the style of Kiss or King Diamond, etc. Uh, that's a good point. In the comic book, let's, uh, setting aside the cartoon, I can't comment as much on the cartoon because I don't uh, know it as well, but in the comic book, in Larry Hama's comic book, Nonconformists were generally the bad guys. Uh, Nonconformists, your punk rockers, your heavy metal guys, uh, you know, your bikers, they're usually the bad guys. Uh, either they were in Cobra, like the Dreadnoughts, um, or like if there was like a street scene, uh, you'd always see like the punk kids, you know, mugging somebody or beating somebody up. You know, that, that's kind of the universe that uh, Larry Hama wrote in G.I. Joe. It kind of has um, like, like a, a conservative point of view about certain types of music and, you know, nonconformists in general. Uh, and I think that's interesting. Um, uh, that, that is something that I have noticed. And maybe when I get back to reviewing the comics, that'll, that's something that I'll cover a little bit. Uh, Zazel Logan Phoenix says, uh, I'm a huge Sergeant Slaughter fan. My question is, what version is superior? And what do you think his, of his character as a G.I. Joe? Um, uh, I think my favorite version, at least, is the first version, the mail-away version. I like that color scheme. I like his, you know, his black... Uh, trousers and you know his tank top, uh, and, and I, I think yeah I think that the the mail away version still my favorite for version one, uh, version two was pretty cool too, um, but what do I think of the character? I like the character and and I've never been a wrestling fan. I don't care about Sergeant Slaughter as a wrestler at all, but I just thought that he fit with GI Joe. I thought the his introduction in the comic book. Uh, I mean, they didn't even mention him as a wrestler, uh, but, you know, they brought him in as a really tough guy, and that, you know, that's the kind of guy that G.I. Joe needs sometimes. Uh, he was used um, more extensively in the cartoon, but um, I kind of liked the way he was used there, too. Um, I really didn't mind. I mean, he was a little bit over the top, but I just felt like uh, it, was st it still fit the character. And as long as you didn't go too crazy over the top, you know, it could still fit in G.I. Joe. So I like the character, um, both in the, G the comic book and the cartoon, and I think version one, that's still my favorite. Uh, William J., are you considering uh, attending JoeCon again? Yes. In fact, uh, as much as I can, I'd like to attend every year. So I hope to see lots of people at JoeCon in Colorado this year. Uh, John Perry says... Uh, what would you like to see happen in the future of G.I. Joe? This is a, a good question. Um, in an episode of What's on Joe Mind, the podcast, 
Uh, Kirk Bozigian, who was the head of marketing of Boy Toys at Hasbro at the time that they were doing G.I. Joe, he said that he thinks they need to blow it up. Blow it up and start new. And uh, that's probably not a popular answer, especially for a lot of people who are collecting modern G.I. Joe, but I agree with that. Blow it up. Uh, right now, what you're doing is you're creating modern versions of 80s toys, of Cold War era toys. Uh, these are, essentially right now, G.I. Joe is a nostalgia act. I don't know, I mean, maybe some kids play with G.I. Joe now, but the toys that I see produced, they look like they are being produced for adult collectors, not for kids. And at this point, I think that the next generation deserves its own G.I. Joe. Kind of the way we in the 80s got our own G.I. Joe that was different from the 60s and from the 70s. We got our own and it was perfect for the time. It was like it just fit the 80s perfectly. Well, the kids nowadays, they deserve their own G.I. Joe that's actually designed and made for them, not a copy of the stuff that we liked. Uh, so I don't know exactly what form G.I. Joe should take, but I think that at some point, if you want a, a next generation of G.I. Joe fan, then you need to give the next generation their G.I. Joe. And it may look very different from the G.I. Joe that we remember. But if you don't do that, eventually, when the last fan dies out, then G.I. Joe dies out. There isn't much of a future. Uh, and I'd like for G.I. Joe to go on. I think the brand and the history deserves to be carried forward. So that's, those are my thoughts about that. Uh, Jacob Victor Buzko says, uh, can you do uh, or make a Destro Month and make some Cobra Soldiers from uh, 1988 to 1992? Um, the answer is, if I had them, I sure could. I mean, I don't, I don't have anywhere near enough Destro action figures to make a Destro month. If I did, that would be pretty interesting theme month. Um, and I don't have enough Cobras from 88 to 92. But like I said, my goal is to have everything and to review everything. So eventually, eventually I'll get to it. I'm just not quite ready to do it yet. Uh, and finally, Carlos Augusto Ladesma II uh, says the basics, name, job, family, etc. My name is Brian. Uh, my job is attorney. Um, I have a family, uh, a wife, and two kids, both daughters. Uh, and I don't know what etc. is, but we'll just end on that. So that's it. We got through all the questions. Thank you for all the questions. I hope that you like the answers. I hope I didn't stutter too much. I do that sometimes when I'm kind of going off script. But I really enjoyed the questions. We may have to do this again sometime. This was fun. Um, but now we're done with 2015. Now we're on to 2016. There's no video review for next week. But that's because I'm working on something special for the first review of 2016. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be a little while before we see each other, but we'll see each other again soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching all of my uh, videos. Thanks for being a part of this channel. Thanks for the interaction. Thank you for everything and Happy New Year.